Hey everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of the Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn. On this episode, I'm really excited to have back with me on the show, Andrew Scambati, and we'll talk all about his new upcoming KISS film, Alive 96. He'll also share some stories, and we'll both reminisce about what it was like to be a KISS fan during the reunion tour era. I think you guys will really enjoy this. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day, we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. Now, without further ado, let's jump in and get started with my conversation with Andrew Scambati. Hey everybody, welcome to the latest episode of The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn. I am really honored and happy to have back on the show. You know him. I don't even need to introduce him. Hey, Andrew, how you doing? Hey, good, good to be here. Uh, is this my third time? Back this is here, your third time, absolutely. Third time. Third, time's third the time's charm. The charm. That's right, yeah. absolutely. That's why I'm like, I don't even need to introduce you. This is the third time you've been here. Although it's yeah. been like five, six months. So, how's everything been for you? It's been good. You know, uh, just like everybody else, I'm kind of dealing with this new normal that's going on. Mm-hmm. Staying home a lot, um, doing a lot of things from home. Uh, obviously not going to concerts. Mm-hmm. Um, huge thank you. Shout out to everyone who watched one last time. I mean, as we're recording, this is over 360,000 views. Amazing. So uh, well it was a huge success. And uh, that's thanks to guys like you and thanks to people that tune into the show. So uh, I, I'm so, so over over the moon. Like every time I say thank you, it doesn't feel like it's enough. So, uh, But I'll say it again. So thank you to everyone that watched that. And thank you to Mike for spreading the word on that. So I'm uh, really appreciative. Well, it was a great film. It was well-deserved. And, you know, you've said, you know, we haven't been able to go to concerts the last six, seven months, although I got to go yeah. to one last week, which was cool. But um, that's a whole different story. Um, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but you've been keeping busy anyway, working I, on I, a I, film I, 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 and bringing us back to busy. another time when we were at I'm, concerts. So what have you been working on? <laughs> Well, uh, it's funny. I every time I do something, and I'm always like, "This is my last kiss thing. This is uh-huh. my last kiss thing." And uh, then I get ideas later on. I'm like, <laughs> "Maybe I should do something else, or maybe I can do this." Mm-hmm. So I've kind of been long working on a Hot in the Shade documentary that uh, mm-hmm. that'll be out next year, uh, I think, because I'm just I'm still working on that. That's still kind of I'm mulling over everything um, having to do with that, but. Uh, what I have been working on is somebody, I guess about maybe two or three months ago, maybe even a little bit longer than that, somebody posted a full show from Tiger Stadium, 96, mm-hmm. their opening of the reunion tour. Mm-hmm. And I was watching it, looking at that, and I was like, man, it, they put it in the wrong aspect ratio. So, so the picture <laughs> was stretched. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was bad quality. There mm-hmm. were all these like little cuts, and it didn't sound good, and they're all, the band is messing up. It didn't, it didn't showcase the power and it didn't showcase the excitement of the reunion tour. Mm-hmm. So I kind of watched it and I go, what if I did something that was a straight concert film, um, all concert footage from beginning to end, and what if I went in and I fixed all the mess-ups, I fixed all the bad guitar notes, I fixed the drum mess-ups, I fixed, I fixed all these things and I made it sound and look like the reunion tour video that we should have gotten in the beginning of 1997. I go, what would that look like? There's a ton of pro shot footage out there, but I feel like every piece, every full concert that's out there has its drawbacks. You know, mm-hmm. Tiger Stadium, it sounds good, but, you know, the band sounds really nervous mm-hmm. in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Madison Square Garden concert looks good, but Gene lost his voice. It's missing some songs. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Atlanta show, it kind of looks all right. Uh, but you have all these different shows. So I go, what if I took the best parts of each of these shows And I put them together and I basically made the VHS tape that never came out in Mm -hmm. 1997. Mm -hmm. What would that look like? Right. Right. So that's what I've done. And uh, it's called Alive 96. And um, it basically it has all of the high points of the reunion tour. It basically says if you want to relive the excitement of what it felt like to love this band in the summer of 1996. Here you go. This Mm -hmm. is this is the thing. So. Um, I've painstakingly curated 10 concerts and I've taken the most important parts of 10 concerts. So I didn't just say, okay, well, New York Grooves from here, or Strutters from here. I would take all the versions of Deuce and then I would be like, okay, I like this shot. I like this shot. And I took all these pieces. There's hundreds of edit points in this thing. Mm-hmm. And I synced all of the video footage 
to the Tiger Stadium show. Mm-hmm. Now, Tiger Stadium to me sounded the best, okay. but as you know, the band was nervous, so there's yeah. some mess ups there. Mm-hmm. So all the little mess ups I fixed. There was a couple. There was a, a drum mess up in Deuce. Mm-hmm. There was like you know wrong notes here. I fixed all those, mm-hmm. and. So if you didn't know I fix it, I really I, I gave you the product that Kiss really should have put out mm-hmm. in 1997. Yep, absolutely. Now that's one of the things to me because you let me see a, an early a rough draft of this, right? And that's one of the things to mm-hmm. me that it's it is a little bit different than some of your other films. Some of your other films had concert footage, and then there'd be like quick interview things, or there'd be a look back. This is just pretty much a straight concert. And I think you know based on what you're saying right now, we know Kiss did the second coming video, and this is obviously. Mm-hmm. You know, that was not concert footage. It was concert footage, but not a straight concert. Is that why you decided to go just full on concert for this? Yeah. Yeah. There was kind of really no um, there. I couldn't. There's nothing that I could have done that would have been better or as good as the second coming. Mm -hmm. So I knew that if I was going to represent this time period, I was going to need to do something different. Mm -hmm. And a lot of fans have said, man, a full concert should have come with the second coming. Or why didn't we get a full concert? Mm-hmm. You know, it would have sold like hotcakes. Why didn't we get Kiss Alive 4 mm-hmm. at that time? Mm-hmm. So I, I wanted to do something different. And basically everything that I've done has been filling in the gaps. There was no TV special in 1976, so that's why I did Kiss at mm-hmm. Midnight. And there was no movie in 1978. That's why I did The Greatest Show on Earth. Mm-hmm. Um, there was nothing at the at the time, but, you know, that could change in these coming months. There was nothing that documented the end of the road tour. So that's right. why I did one last time. Mm-hmm. So now I went back to the reunion tour and there was, there was a full, full concert. Well, mm-hmm. I say full concert. I mean, uh, uh, Live 96 is 15 songs, but it's all the highlights, all the big right. parts of the show. Yep. There was nothing that was put out like that. Mm-hmm. And even when you look back at some of the TV stuff that came out, there was uh, a concert that was aired from Rock and Ring in Germany, mm-hmm. 97. Even that was missing some of mm-hmm. the big pieces mm-hmm. of, of the show. Sure. So, so for me, I'm like, what would I have liked to have seen as a fan? And that's what I've done here. Yeah. I've, uh, I, I've spent hours and hours and hours and hours looking at the same footage over and over again. <laughs> and uh, I made it one cohesive concert. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that to me is one of the things that comes through. And I love the second coming video, right? Love it. It's probably my favorite home video. Me too. Me too. But my only complaint is every time they show the band rehearsing, performing, I think seven times out of 10, it's Deuce. It's like, all right, could could you show me another song? The only thing I remember seeing on that is Deuce and Dr. Love, like over and over again. It's like, so to your point. And Cold Gin. I said, there's no like full concert or even for that matter, three quarters of a concert experience on that video. And I think this- Or even a song. Yeah, exactly. So I think this fills in that gap big time so now you're saying you use those 10 different shows i remember one of the other times you were on you said there was something like three thousand different edits and and spices that you've done how much do you have to edit and work through for this one so hopefully when someone sees this they don't know all the work that went behind (laughs) it because if they don't know all the work that went behind it then i I did my job right so just to give you a little peek into how it's edited together um, let's just look at, since you mentioned, let's look at the first song, which is Deuce. Mm-hmm. I had every concert that I pulled, I had Deuce from that. So sure. uh, the concerts that I used were uh, Detroit, you know, Tiger Stadium, mm-hmm. which is all the audio comes from Tiger Stadium. Because okay. I thought the band sounded the best there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So all the, everything comes from Tiger Stadium. So I have Deuce from Tiger Stadium. I have Deuce from the Weenie Roast. Mm-hmm. The biggest drawback about the Weenie Roast is it looked the most different. But we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Then I have Toledo, Madison Square Garden. And I got some footage from... Frankfurt, Germany, and then I have Tokyo, 97. Mm-hmm. So I have seven, ver- six versions of Deuce. Did you have Atlanta stacked- in there also? Um, the problem with Atlanta mm-hmm. is uh, the version of Atlanta that looks the best, it was shot only from Peter Chris's camera. Right. So mm-hmm. unless I needed a shot of Peter, which I had plenty of those, <laughs> right. I, I didn't, I didn't use it there. Okay, makes sense. Makes sense. So, so I have all those shows, what I did, as then I, I took all of the parts that I liked from each show. Mm-hmm. My main track was Tiger Stadium, but I kind of built on top of Tiger Stadium. I go, okay, well, I like this shot from here. I like this shot from there. Mm-hmm. And then I would sync that shot up to the Tiger Stadium uh, audio. Mm-hmm. So when you're watching it, it looks like you're watching one show. Mm-hmm. Now, you're probably saying, you're like, well, Peter really messes up badly on the drums because mm-hmm. the whole band was nervous. The band, mm-hmm. you know, almost came to a screeching halt during the first song. <laughs> right. So I cut the song there and I took just a little piece of the audio from the weenie roast mm-hmm. and I spliced it in there. And if you didn't know that I did this, 
to my ears and probably to your ears too. Mm-hmm. You can't tell that I fixed yeah. it. No, I, I, you know, I know what you're talking about with the mess up and deuce. Mm-hmm. When I watched that, it never even crossed my mind. Like it was just that yeah. seamless to me. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to, I wanted to show all the highlights. I wanted it to show the band at at their best. Mm-hmm. So there's probably about close to three or four thousand edits in this whole thing Amazing. because I'm taking little bits of every show and making it one song. Right. Um, you know, for example, King of the Nighttime World, mm-hmm. they didn't play, uh, uh, the, the official Kissology DVD didn't have King of the Nighttime World. Mm-hmm. So I took King of the Nighttime World from Detroit, from Tokyo, from Frankfurt, from mm-hmm. Toledo, mm-hmm. from uh, a little bit from Atlanta, mm-hmm. uh, just all these different shows to get all the different camera angles and all the different shots that I wanted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because if you're watching these shows from Kissology, especially the Tiger Stadium show, it's all really close up. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. Because it was for the, the stuff shot on the screens. Mm-hmm. And uh, and you're like, oh, man, you know, the show is cool, but you're missing so much of the ambiance mm-hmm. right. that's not there. So using professional news footage that was shot and, and using stuff that was shot from the soundboard, I, I'm able to put back in the shots of the whole show mm-hmm. so that way you can get the whole experience right. in there. Right. Yeah. And that's now, to me, that's one of the things I did pick up on. You do have some of those wide angle shots, which is cool. Yeah. Where you can see the whole show because mm-hmm. the show was still pretty spectacular at yeah. the time yeah. for, for anyone that saw it. Um, the other the other problem that I had to work on, too, is all the shows, they looked very different. Hmm. Uh, for some reason, Tiger Stadium has this ugly green tint to it. <laughs> okay. So after I figured out all the shots that I wanted, I went back in and I matched all the shots of Every show looks like it came from the same night. You don't really notice the ugly greens from Tiger Stadium mm-hmm. or um, the Toledo show. It lo- everybody looked really yellow. Mm-hmm. So I took all. I, I went back in and I fixed all of that stuff. So that way, when you're watching it, you're like, "Oh, this all, this all could have happened mm-hmm. the same night." You don't mm-hmm. know that switching back from night to night, right? Because uh, I went and I matched it as close as I could. Mm-hmm. So not only did were there all those edits, I had to go back in and I had to color correct everything, mm-hmm. which probably took the longest amount of time. I can imagine. And now, and also the Toledo show, that's the Toledo 97, right? Where Peter Chris yeah. was not at that yeah. show. So I'm sure you also had to uh, make no, sure. Peter was at that show. Columbus, Georgia was where Peter Chris wasn't at. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I, th- I thought it was the other way around, but yeah, I'm sure Toledo my memory's wrong. Peter, Columbus, okay. Georgia had Eddie gotcha. Cannon. From. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So my memory was a little fakaka there. So. Which I didn't use anything from Columbus, Georgia because. For that reason isn't a great version of that show that circulates gotcha. every yeah. version looks like it's fourth or fifth generation yep yeah. yeah. so um when picking footage i always try to pick footage that i had the best quality of it makes sense because i wanted this to look like oh hey this could have been something that the band released right so i didn't want to use um there's a great show that we were both at the new jersey show from new year's eve mm-hmm. yep I was gonna great say. show mm-hmm. but unfortunately it's dark mm. and um doesn't look that great. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Uh, there's a multicam version of the Atlanta show that circulates, mm-hmm. but it's like the fifth or sixth generation. It's very blurry. Right. Doesn't yep. look that great. Yep. Uh, there's the Columbus, Georgia show that I mentioned before yep. where Peter Chris isn't there. Mm-hmm. Doesn't look that great. Right. Um, and there's also some footage from some of the Rock Am Ring show that doesn't look great either that mm-hmm. I couldn't use. So um, not only what did I look at the stuff that was out there, but I looked at the stuff that was in the absolute best quality. Right. Most of the stuff comes from Kissology Volume 3, whether okay. it's going to be Tiger Stadium, Madison Square Garden, or the Weenie Roast. Hmm. Um, okay. And I was very sparing with how I use the Weenie Roast because that show looks so much different than mm-hmm. any of the other shows. Right. Because it's a different a staging, of... isn't it? Correct, right. correct. A lot of the staging, the video production, the lights – wasn't kisses Mm -hmm. it was all there for that that festival show that was going on right right it was uh the the weenie roast the weenie the weenie roast was the festival that was going there was like you know 15 bands that played exactly exactly right yeah and um that technically was before the the tour even started it was like two weeks before the tour even started and kiss did like a 45 minute set or a one hour set or something like that Yes. But set. I took little pieces from mm-hmm. that show. They're like little close-ups where you couldn't tell where it was from. Right. Just like little things where I needed little shots here and there. Sure. Uh, and uh, I thought the band actually played better at the Weenie Roast, if mm-hmm. you can imagine, than they did at Tiger <laughs> Stadium. Right. Uh, right, right, which is funny. I mean, man, there, were, there, there was a, a really big – the whole band messed up at the beginning of God of Thunder right before Gene came in to start okay. singing. 
at Tiger Stadium. Mm -hmm. So I had to take a couple different shows and a couple different parts of the song mm. to make it so the band start all they started the song together. Right, right, right. 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 Shout out loud was a was a big it was a big mess up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there were times where, where Peter would start too early, or he would start too late because mm -hmm. he couldn't hear. Yep, yep. So, uh, so I, I fixed that. Um, Ace sounded like he dropped his guitar during 100,000 years mm. at Tiger Stadium. Okay. So I, I fixed that. Right. So there were all these things that I just fixed, and hopefully you won't know that I fixed right. them right. if I did my job right. Right. So hopefully. to me, it sounds like not only is it great just from a video point of view, but even from the audio point of view, right? Because it's not like we got any live albums or whatever from that tour. Yeah. So yeah. it's kind of like a nice compliment for that as well. Yeah. So I want to give a big shout out to Andy Sanford, who is the only other person that worked on this with me. Mm -hmm. um, he remastered and redid all the audio. So after... After I cut everything up and I blended everything together, he went in and he fixed all the audio. He he did a really great remixing and remastering job. So um, it sounds better than Kissology ever did. Mm -hmm. uh, there's extra, you know, bombs and extra sound effects and extra mm -hmm. things going on. So that's in there, too. So uh, if you just have the Kissology, you're only getting part of this creation of mm -hmm. mine. Mm -hmm. So uh, so, again, it's just like all of my other creations. There's not going to be any DVDs. I'm not selling mm -hmm. this. You can't download it. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be available on YouTube and also on Vimeo mm -hmm. for people who, who like Vimeo over YouTube. But um, but again, it starts with with Kissology and then it uh, it branches out from there. Right. Now, one of the things that, so like we said, it's a full concert, but I love that the first whatever it is, 35 seconds, 40 seconds of the film, you do start with the Grammy performance. <laughs> we need to show I love that because even as I'm saying it to you, I get chills i i goosebumps yeah. on me you know. do you remember that night the, the grammy night of course, of course i do because i remember um i had become a fan in the late 80s i think mm -hmm. i was a fan by probably by 88 89 i was a fan mm -hmm. and uh i was too young at the time i was only three or four years old and i didn't yeah. know that they'd taken the makeup off and i know the members hadn't right. been there and when it came time for 94 when they were promoting the release of kiss my ass and mm -hmm. kiss was on the the tonight show with with uh, garth, garth brooks, brooks. Mm -hmm. I watched that with with my mom and I was like, how come they're not wearing makeup? Like, I, I didn't understand that they mm -hmm. had taken the makeup. Funny. But I remember I remember the Grammys. I remember um, and I, I don't remember this live. But when you saw like the Grammy introduction where it says all the people are going to be there, mm -hmm. it showed a picture of Kiss without makeup. Mm -hmm. And I remember watching it and I see them come out in full makeup. And mm -hmm. I just I just remember freaking out. I was mm -hmm. 10 years old. Okay. And I was like, mommy, mommy, kiss, kiss. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, you know, then the news hit later on that they were going to be reuniting. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I, I didn't go to the, did you go to the Intrepid? I was at the Intrepid, waited online about six hours to get in, and I missed by eight people. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> I cry when I think about that. It was drizzling. It was not a beautiful day outside. Yeah. And they cut the line. They said, that's it. No more. And I was eight people off that cutoff spot. So I was there, but not inside. So I remember when that happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I remember about a month later when they were on Fox. Mm -hmm. And they were giving away tickets on top of the old uh, Hard Rock in okay. Vegas. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I remember seeing that. I remember, mm -hmm. you know, Paul kicking through the glass and showing tickets for Tiger Stadium. So I, I remember that. So by that time, I was like, oh, man, Kiss is coming back. And I, I was excited again. So mm -hmm. what I really wanted to do with this is I really wanted to get you excited again. So mm -hmm. you hear Tupac saying he wants to shock the people. Mm -hmm. And then you see the limo pulling up. So all that footage from pulling up, that's from Tiger Stadium. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's either there was a couple of clips that I took from the second coming. Mm -hmm. And then there were a couple of clips that I took from some of those VH1 TV shows, whether it was Beyond the Makeup or uh, Ultimate Albums. Okay. Because mm -hmm. they had different shots from Tiger Stadium in there. Right. So I took that okay. just because I felt like it was important to get excited. Mm -hmm. You know, you see the limo pulling up and then you see them walking out of the limo and then they're walking to the stage and, and then you see uh, then you see the fans. Mm -hmm. And, and um, it was about recreating that excitement. Mm-hmm. As a fan, because, you know, back then there was no Facebook, there was no text messaging and excuse me, basically what um, what you saw on the news or what you saw on a Conan show or what mm -hmm. you saw live later on. That's all you saw. Mm -hmm. yep. And there, there's something to be said about that, because even when you hear the audience recordings from some of those really early shows, mm -hmm. 
the audience is so loud mm-hmm. when the band is on stage. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's incredible. Absolutely. So especially at, at a time now where everybody's fighting over who they did or didn't vote for, mm-hmm. or you know, people are disappointed that they have to stay home or, or whatever. So I think it's important to remember back to a time where everybody was unified and we were all looking forward to seeing this band called Kiss. Amen. So Amen. Hopefully people take a little bit of that away. So and, and I'll tell you I did, right? So I remember very vividly the Grammy night, right? Mm-hmm. Because I actually had a friend who lived in Connecticut at the time who tipped me off mid January that Kiss was reuniting. Okay? That he received talk about nineties, a fax from Gene Simmons. And he calls me on the phone. And he's like, Mike, I got to read this to you. And he's so excited. So I'm like, holy crap, but I couldn't say anything. So for months, I kind of knew Kiss was reuniting. Now they announced they're gonna be on the Grammys, but I didn't know for sure. Like you said, there wasn't like, are they gonna be with makeup on? But I knew my friend told me they were reuniting. So I'm like, is this gonna be it? And then Tupac comes up and he's like, we need to shock the people. I'm like, this is going to be it. This is going to, and I'm sitting on my couch so excited, which is why I love that you put that there because that to me just symbolizes that whole feeling like this is going to be it. This is it. And then they walk out. I'm like, it is. Yes, yes, yes. I will forever look at that clip and remember me sitting on the couch that night. So excited because like you said, there was no internet. There was no texting. I just happened to get this information from a friend, which I was 95% confident that it was right. But I was sitting there on the edge of my seat that night waiting, thinking they were going to come out and make up. So what a fun time it was. An absolute fun time. It was. I mean, that was that was really – it wasn't my introduction to the band. Mm-hmm. I obviously wasn't old enough to to see the band in the 70s when mm-hmm. you know it was hysteria or hysteria rather. Mm-hmm. So for me to be able to walk into like a – sandwich or a little deli and see kiss on the cover of entertainment weekly mm-hmm. and all these different magazines mm-hmm. that was exciting so yes. the 90s kiss is i'm gonna catch a lot of flack for saying this that reunion show that's my favorite time period for the I band understand that. because i just i remember so much from from that time period i mean look I, I got these i'm actually a little mad about these because the person that sold them to me uh told me the wrong size so now i gotta get like custom frames for these but uh-huh. like i just got these Nice. All the yep. all the spin, the spin magazine magazines, posters, yeah. mm-hmm. because I just I love everything, you know, reunion tour kiss. Yeah, and and even when even the Psycho Circus tour, I was excited for too because that was the first new CD I bought the day that it came out. Mm-hmm. So, for me, I look back with such fond memories mm-hmm. on the reunion tour, yeah. and and there there's no better time. I watch all those TV clips. I watch you know. VH1 Route 96 and mm-hmm. I watch, you know, Kiss on Modern Science or talking about the stage or them on Good Morning America. Mm-hmm. You know, just it it always it I'm like, man, I love this band and I and I love that time. Something about the 90s mm-hmm. that it was I mean, they say Kiss is a 70s band, but something about Kiss reuniting and being on top of the world again. I'm like, man, that's so 90s. Mm-hmm. No, it was. Like, uh, it was. You know, while I was while I was you know creating this 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 uh, this video Alive '96, which comes out December 11th on yep. YouTube and Vimeo, yep. mm-hmm. while I was while I was creating Alive '96, I was watching reruns of Frasier and <laughs> reruns of Seinfeld and <laughs> just great. really digging in mm-hmm. to, to the, 90s, the whole '90s you know. vibe, right? Yeah, yeah. I bought a bunch of '90s magazines. I bought Forbes from mm-hmm. the '90s and mm-hmm. Goldmine and, and all that stuff, and just you know just remembering how cool it was. Right. Right. And uh, and one of the things I did the very, very first night that I decided I was going to do this and I was collecting all this different video footage, mm-hmm. I went on the old Kiss Asylum web page. Mm-hmm. I went back to the news. Which is also now archive. very 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went back to the news archive. I went all the way back to January 1996. Mm-hmm. And I read the news every day mm-hmm. from January 96 all the way to August 97. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, how cool was this back mm-hmm. then? This was really all the news that you got. And mm-hmm. it's funny how you see things that you know happened later on that they're like, hey, we heard a rumor that Kiss is going to do a 3D tour. Mm-hmm. This is in like May of 96. Right. And then years later it happened. Right. In Psycho Circus 98. Right, right. Uh, it, it's, just, it, it's so cool. One of the coolest things that I ended up finding while I was making this whole thing um, most of the time I was looking for only live footage mm-hmm. and, and like different little live clips, but I did find some cool interview footage. Okay. Um, I did find one of the coolest things I found is I found this little promo package that McFarlane toys made in late mm-hmm. 97 
to promote the Kiss action figures. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize that. Uh, I mean, I know that Toy Fair happens every year, mm-hmm. but I didn't realize that they had a big Kiss display at Toy Fair that year. Okay. They had the they had the little McFarland figures, mm-hmm. and they had the big versions. Right. Mm-hmm. But then they had full size mannequins of Kiss in the reunion tour costumes. Mm-hmm. I thought that was so cool. I was like, mm-hmm. I had no idea that this this is you know footage that's 23 years old. Right. And it's. I'm just as excited seeing it now mm-hmm. than I would have been back then. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, so it was cool. This is this is something that's been a long time coming, mm-hmm. and this is something that really should have happened. This should have been the VHS tape that we could have bought at Record World or mm-hmm. or the Wall mm-hmm. or <laughs> whatever Coconuts music. This you right, should have right, been right. able to walk into Tower Records, right. and you should have been able to buy this VHS tape. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, um, the thing the the thing that I did different on this one is. If you look at all of my all of my presentations, they all have that lightning bolt S in there. That was yep. kind of I'm like, mm-hmm. like this is my thing. Mm-hmm. So when I was working on this one, I'm like, how like what am I going to name it where I could include that lightning bolt S? Mm-hmm. And I tell you, it went through three different names really? before I stuck on a live 96. Mm-hmm. Um, but once once I settled on a live 96, I go, mm-hmm. that's got to be the name. I mm-hmm. go because that's this is what this is. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it's a shame that I couldn't work that lightning bolt thing in there, but ah, what are you going to do? Okay. <laughs> a li- once I knew that I was going to name it a live 96, I was mm-hmm. like, that's it. That's it. No, it fits. It. it fits. And you know what you said before, kiss is obviously the first time period where they became very popular was the seventies. No doubt about yeah. it. But if you look at it objectively, 96, 97 was probably the peak popularity of the band ever, right? Yeah. In terms of number of shows around the world. Like those 70s tours, a lot of them were 50 shows, 40 shows, 60 shows. Most of them were only United States. A couple yeah. of times they'd go over to Japan. One year they went over to Europe, right? And then did some stuff. But in the 70s, it was basically a U.S. thing. 96 was a global thing. Yeah. And everywhere you went was Kiss, every magazine, every yeah. news, you know, Everywhere they went around the world, the news had Kiss on it. That it was such an exciting time to be a Kiss fan. To me, unlike any other time in their history, unless you were there, you don't you don't understand. And to me, that's part of what this film does. It kind of brought me back as I'm watching it to, yeah, I remember that. So I remember seeing them seven times that year. And how much freaking fun was that? You know. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what it's it's about remembering those early the, that that first summer run in the summer of 96 it's like sit down you know you could have put this tape i mean this this tape should have come out christmas 1996 mm-hmm. absolutely and it would have sold like hotcakes on that lost cities tour yes absolutely and um it's just it's about remembering how cool it was like mm-hmm. this is no one thought that this was going to happen right it's funny. It's been 24 years since they put the makeup back on, and those 24 years went by like that. Yes. Mm-hmm. But if you remember those 17 years <laughs> in between when Ace and Peter left, yep. and when it seemed like a lifetime. It totally seemed like a lifetime because mm-hmm. so much had happened. They were releasing albums every year mm-hmm. and all this and that. Uh, now, when someone tells me, "Oh yeah, you know, t- t- the day we're recording this, it's the 22nd Second anniversary." anniversary. Yep. Mm-hmm. Since we saw Kiss at the Garden in Absolutely. 98. Yep. Mm-hmm. It doesn't seem like 22 years ago. But it's, it was. It's crazy. And the only reason I always know it is is because that was the last concert I went to before my daughter was born four days later. And I was actually <laughs> supposed to go to the Coliseum the night she was born. <laughs> so it's like the, my wife and I were literally just talking about that 15 minutes ago. But that's crazy that it's 22 years ago. 22 years ago. It's crazy. Insane. <laughs> it's insane. It doesn't seem like it was that long ago. Mm-hmm. But uh, if you look at the band, how they looked in 96, you're like, man, they look in, they looked so good. I'm so glad you bring that up because as I'm watching it, I'm like – Damn, Ace looks skinny, in shape, into it. You know, look, we all get older. I've gained a lot of weight in the last few years, right? So I'm not criticizing, but there's a big difference, Ace today, to Ace 96. And, you know, you look at those pictures, and sometimes it's hard to tell if it's 96 it or 77. Hard. You know, it's yeah. really hard to tell. It was yeah, incredible. Yeah, the, the band, they, you know, not saying it about how the band looks or sounds now, but mm-hmm. man, when they, they looked good, and you, you forget how good they looked. Yeah. Because we've been looking at them in the monster costumes or the mm-hmm. end of the road costumes. You forget that when you look back, you're like, man, they looked so good mm-hmm. back in 96. Yeah. And, and they were ready to rule the world. And, uh, you know, in, in, in doing this, it, it made me go like, man, there's not a whole lot of pictures that they put out around that time. I mean, there's a couple mm-hmm. of things in the tour books and this and that. But like, 
you know, it, it was hard for me to pick a picture that I wanted to use mm-hmm. for that. I, mm-hmm. I ended up settling on the um, the shoot that they did for Spin Magazine on, on okay. the white background because mm-hmm. I thought I thought it was the perfect symbol of there. It was nothing else mattered except the four guys mm-hmm. in the makeup and the costume. Mm-hmm. Yep. I didn't want to do a whole bunch of you know complicated like flames or or make it look like an old picture. I'm like, I just wanted to, to be these four guys mm-hmm. at the time. What were these brand new costumes, recreations mm-hmm. of, of, of 96, mm-hmm. 90 of the love gun costumes. Yeah. And I wanted it to be like, this is, this is what it is. Mm-hmm. So didn't matter what the stage was. Mm-hmm. Didn't matter anything. Just there are these four guys in these costumes again. Absolutely. So, uh, it's, it's actually a shame that there aren't more photos from that shoot, that surface. That's true. Uh, there's only, there's uh there's just really one spread in the spin magazine mm-hmm. and then there's one more outtake and that's right. really it and that's it right 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 very interesting now and i won't say what it is unless you could if, if you want but i love even the last three four minutes of the video and some of the i'll say there's some non-concert footage towards the very end like right like after the credits which, uh, which yes. I, I thought that was really cool the way you did that uh, yes so um I, i'm not going to spoil it but there mm-hmm. is a little easter egg at the very end mm-hmm. so after the credits get done rolling, there's a little Easter mm-hmm. egg. And um, it's just something every time I watch it, I go, oh, man. Like, <laughs> I, I get, I'm like, I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Knock if, my headphones out of my ears. Hey, too excited, right? Now, if, I know because <laughs> because when I watch that, I'm just like, oh, man. Like, yeah. I, just, I, it, I get so excited mm-hmm. because um, it was just just I look back on that time period so fondly. I really do. Mm-hmm. I really, really do. Mm-hmm. And um, not to say that I don't look back fondly at 77 or Dynasty or any of that stuff. Just, man, that this is my kiss. Mm-hmm. And uh, so you're going to hopefully, hopefully, you know, you're going to watch it. You're going to enjoy it. But make sure you stay till the very end. You'll That's why I brought it up. Cool. <laughs> That's why I brought it up. You'll see, you'll see and you'll hear something cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, you know, it'll just, it'll all come full circle. Absolutely. It'll all come full circle. The, the other cool thing that I did, and um, usually what I do when I do these things, I try and get really era specific as far as like the greatest show on earth. I use the Casablanca logo and all mm-hmm. that stuff. Yep. So for this one, I was, I'm like, I was like, ah, you know, I remember that silly Kiss Army Depot logo with the, the head <laughs> yeah. and the headphones. And I was mm-hmm. like, Man, I'm gonna use that on mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. So the little promotional image that I use for Facebook, it's on there. Mm-hmm. I even put it at the end credits in mm-hmm. here too because uh, it was cool. And if you notice back then, because uh, all the credits and stuff that came from the tour book, mm-hmm. I noticed. If you yeah. notice back then, um, it it said uh, copyright the Kiss Company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in the credits, I was like Incognito Films. In association with not the Kiss Company. Yep, I noticed just that. Because, <laughs> just because it was my it was my mm-hmm. little wink. I go, this is it would have said the Kiss Company mm-hmm. back then, which is kind of mm-hmm. something they've gotten away from. Right. Yeah. Um, but it, it's one of those things that like, oh, this is what it would have been like in ninety mm-hmm. six. Mm-hmm. Um, so go back, go read those, go read those tour books. You know, I took some credits from the original, the black version of the tour book, mm-hmm. and then there's uh, some differences in the silver okay. version of the tour mm-hmm. book. Yeah. Um, just to I don't know, just to make it. I don't know. For some for some reason, I, I just I love credits. I love beginning and ending credits. It just it it adds this level of legitimacy to it. Absolutely, and I, and yeah. I picked up on that with the ending credits. That mm-hmm. you know, you it went through like all the different people that worked with them on the tour and whatever. Yeah. And and I really felt like it was, like you said, it could have been a video that came out in December of '96 with all those credits yeah. in there and all the people that worked on yeah. on that tour. It really made it authentic feeling to me. Yeah, yeah, and and that's what it's about. This isn't about taking the spotlight away from the band. Mm-hmm. It's not about, you know, uh, dissing what the band does or doesn't do. It's about remembering a time period, and and giving you something that maybe you've never seen before. Mm-hmm. I mean, here's the thing: we, you know, we take for granted these Kissology DVDs because mm-hmm. you and I probably bought them the day they came out. Sure. All three versions Absolutely. of every. every you have every bonus disc. Mm-hmm. But not everybody did that. I so know. some of these mm-hmm. bonus discs, um, you know, the Madison Square Garden show, maybe people don't have. Maybe mm-hmm. all they've seen is the, is the Tiger Stadium show. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, it's you, you hear some footage and see some footage from that because that Madison Square Garden show was awesome. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe they never saw that. But maybe it's going to make a fan go out and, and want to find it or want to mm-hmm. buy it or try and find it on eBay or, or mm-hmm. Amazon. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I always thought it was funny that they didn't release all the bonus discs together after 
the Kissology thing was I'm done because they did. We would have bought it again. Of course, absolutely. And I knew if they did it tomorrow, I'd buy it. Yeah. <laughs> even yeah. though, even though I have, I think like pretty much every bonus disc, I might be missing one or two. Like I might not have got the Tokyo '88 one or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but that's um, just some. But because I already had it full mint condition, but all the other yeah. ones I got, and you know, if they put it out with nine bonus discs in it, Gene, take my money right now. You have it. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Yeah, people people want this, and mm-hmm. and I hope that if Kiss ever decides to do an archival release, mm-hmm. I hope they they hand the keys to the kingdom to Tommy Thayer because yes. I mean that guy. He, he knows. And I hope and I hope Tommy just picks up the phone and says, "Hey Andrew, I need some help <laughs> with this little bit. Would you want mm-hmm. to do something?" Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, "Absolutely. Right. All I want is one copy of what I've done, mm-hmm. and I just want my name in the credits. That's all. <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. You're not so, asking for a whole lot." So I'm hoping, I, I understand that um, Kiss is at a point now where um, it's not very romantic mm-hmm. as far as them working with fans anymore. It's probably not going to happen at this point. Mm-hmm. You know, it was much more organic and romantic in the 90s nice. when people like Rob Conti and all those people got, you know, brought into the circle. I mean, now Kiss can afford to just go to Hollywood and say, okay, we want to make a movie. Um, let's just hire this production house. Right. That's not the way it was done back in the 90s. Yep. So I know I'm still chasing the dream, mm-hmm. but uh, man, I, I, I got to do it. I mm-hmm. wake up every day and I'm so excited to put something together mm-hmm. that I would have wanted to have seen. Right. Right. So that's what these things are about. It's about, uh, it's about the passion of being a fan. And it's, I literally, I, I would not be able to sleep if I didn't do these mm-hmm. because they would be inside me and they just waiting to come out. <laughs> and, you know, cause I get these ideas and, and like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what, what it doesn't matter. If there's a pandemic going, it doesn't matter whatever's going on. Mm-hmm. So I get these ideas and I'm like, man, I, I gotta do this. Mm-hmm. I gotta put this together. Mm-hmm. And, and I always had that fear in the beginning. I go, well, I put it together. There's a good meeting. Mm-hmm. extremely fortunate that people have connected with the right. things that I've done. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say they were good because that's subjective. Mm-hmm. What I'm, I am going to say is I've been very well, I'll fortunate say they were they've good. connected with people. I'll, I'll say they were good. <laughs> you can you can say that. You I, can say that. I, and I will say it, right? They were, they were yeah. excellent. Not, not just good. They were excellent, right? And I think, I hope you chase your dream and you get it. But if you don't, right, I think the fact that the last film you put out had over 300,000 people watching it yeah. tells you yeah. that KISS fans want this and they appreciate what you're doing. They like what you're doing. And it's why I feel very confident to say it's not just good. It's excellent because you wouldn't have 300,000 people watching it if it sucked. That's true. And, and, I, and, I, do, and I do appreciate that. I appreciate that you, you gave me the opportunity to talk about these things and, and promote them. So, uh, but I'm thankful for everyone that, that takes time out to watch them mm-hmm. and to share them and to tell their friends about them. Absolutely. You know, I'm, I'm very, I'm very, very fortunate that people have, people have liked it. I think I said it, I think I either said it on the FAQ podcast or on the actual FAQ that I think I've kind of left a, a little skid mark in <laughs> KISS fandom history. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, so hopefully, you know, when it, it's 50 years from now, people, you know, are talking about different things and, and they say, oh, yeah, a big fan put together all these little fan films. And mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They were kind of cool right. because there is I, I say this every time I do something. There's a huge fan film community. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the one of the there's a fan film out about Star Wars where they took Jar Jar Binks. Yep. Out of episode <laughs> Love <one>. it. <laughs> Love it. And I'm like, OK, that's not that bad. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly the movie doesn't totally suck. <laughs> it doesn't suck. I don't exactly. know why I'm not that annoyed anymore. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know what, Andrew, this is the compliment I can say to you. A friend of mine does some of these shows with me sometimes, right? And um, but he never watches the ones that he's not on. <laughs> I'll <at least> say <laughs> that. Which, which is totally, I totally get that. Anyway, he texts me about six months ago. Have you ever seen this film? And it's the greatest show on earth film. Okay. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, dope. Watch episode 25 or whatever it was. I had the guy on that, that did the film. He's like, this is incredible or whatever. And, you know, my friend who's texting me this is hard to please with these kind of things. Right. So he doesn't yeah. just kind of say, oh, this is good. If, if, you know, and he had no clue that I knew you. He just stumbled on the film, thought it was great and thought it would be something I should watch because I would think it was great. So. <laughs> So I just think that's a cool story, you know. It's, it's incredible. Mm-hmm. And some of the people that 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 have seen it, um, I won't tell you who it is, but there is a member of the original band mm-hmm. that did see the greatest show on earth. Nice. And thought it was great. Happy so yeah. um, absolutely. You know, it's uh, I've been able to connect with this person, and uh, it's been cool. It's Very been cool. it's been really cool. Awesome. So um, 
you know, um, what's next? I mean, I got to finish this Hot in the Shade one, yep. uh, which I will do. Uh, it's a little, it's a different monster than all the other ones because mm-hmm. all the other ones were concert based, mm-hmm. and this one is kind of backstage footage based, and I kind of have to make a story mm-hmm. out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it will come out. Uh, I, that I will be doing something with that, and I will make it uh, as cool as I can. I'm sure. And hopefully, people will. When, when you will messaged take it, me, but... whatever, like two months ago, say, "Hey, I'm working on something new. Will Range you coming on?" I was like, "Oh, Hot in the Shade," and you're like, "No." I'm like. No, wait, wait, hold on. I'm waiting for that. So, yeah, so you, yeah. you you have to deliver that, Andrew. I'm sorry. You yeah, I will. <laughs> it's 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 farther along now than it's ever been. Of course, yeah. mm-hmm. and and so I think it's it's probably going to be <clears throat> probably going to be 90 minutes if nice. I had to guess. Okay. And um, it's so out of that 90 minutes, I probably have about 40 minutes that it's really locked in right mm-hmm. now. Okay. Uh, this little pieces here and there that mm-hmm. that I know I want to that I know I want to use. Okay. So, um, so yeah, it, it's coming. There's a lot of footage to review in that. So that's why it's right. taking me longer than anything else. It's also not concert based. Every okay. other project has been concert based. Right. So, you know, it's, it, I mean, this, this was the easiest thing I, I put together as far as trying to get content because I was like, oh, 15 songs. That's right. an hour and a half right there. Right. Right. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's coming, but you know, I'm hoping that maybe, some other band inspires me to do something, but you know, we'll see. <laughs> okay. We'll see. Uh, everybody's like, Oh, you, you gotta do something on, you know, the asylum tour something on the elder tour. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ah, you know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> um, well, if you pull off something for the elder tour, that would be incredible. There's just not a lot of footage. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's my uh, point. It, it right. would literally be like a, like a 30 a Friday minute, show. Like, that would be it. <laughs> yeah. They, they'd be like, it would be like a 30 minute, you know, mm-hmm. teaser for this elder album. And right. Yeah, I just I just don't know. I just don't know if if um, certainly the band wouldn't like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but I just I just don't know. I don't know if uh, if I'd be able to do that. Absolutely. So, uh, Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of it comes out December 11th. Perfect. And uh, just like I did on the last one, it'll be uploaded on YouTube probably like a day or so before. Okay. So as long as you follow my channel, which is Greatest Show on Earth Fan Films you'll you'll get a notification when it's live for you to watch mm-hmm. so it'll be live at 1201 a.m Excellent. on december 11th awesome and uh, that's a friday and it's the same day that, that new paul mccartney album comes out too so go to the record store get the new paul mccartney record and then watch kiss uh watch alive 96 and then uh, listen to paul's new record uh after that too so uh it'll be cool it'll be cool I'm hoping that people dig it. I really am. I, I know that they will, and that I'm sure people will be watching it on that day, commenting online. And um, you said YouTube and YouTube and where else? YouTube and Vimeo. And, Vimeo. and um, there are some people out there that don't pay for the premium YouTube subscription, so sometimes mm-hmm. you get ads in between videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, the great thing about Vimeo is I pay for Vimeo. Okay. So because I pay for Vimeo, there's no ads and there's mm-hmm. no revenue that's generated from from the Vimeo channel. So if you want, Vimeo has a little bit higher quality than YouTube. Okay. It doesn't have the traffic that YouTube has, mm-hmm. and it's more for content creators than anything okay. else. Mm-hmm. So if if you don't want to see the, if you don't want to have any ads in the experience. Uh, definitely check it out on them. There'll be links everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but um, yeah, follow my channel, Greatest Show on Earth Fan Films on YouTube. Mm-hmm. You can see them all on there. You know, go rewatch Kiss at Midnight. Eddie Trunk tweeted about it, mm-hmm. which yep. is awesome. amazing. Um, and then you could always you could rewatch one last time for maybe the last time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, they'll be up there on December 11th. Awesome. Well. Andrew, I'll say thank you for coming back on again. Listen, thanks for having me. Yeah. I really appreciate you coming on and, and chatting and uh, you know seeing you at Kiss events when we're Excellent. able to do those again. And let's hope again it's it's much, much sooner rather than later, right? I Hopefully agree. 2021 we can start getting together in person and, and doing these Kiss I events hope, again. I hope so. I hope so. I know it'll be kind of cool to do that New Year's Eve thing where like we can mm-hmm. chat live mm-hmm. to the but so that'll be kind of cool. Right. You know, we saw Kiss at, on New Year's Eve, 96, 97. Mm-hmm. Didn't know each other. We were both nope, there. Nope, so nope. that's I, the it's hitting me in the nostalgia feels because I'm mm-hmm. like, OK, I remember seeing Kiss, you know, in the reunion tour, 96, 97. So that was kind of cool. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. This will be kind of cool, too. So right. uh, I'm definitely in for that. And hopefully there are other people that, uh, that are going to enjoy it, too. Absolutely. And if you don't and you want to watch something free. You stream one last time or stream Alive 96 on New Year's Eve. <laughs> there you go. So one more time, Alive 96, what's the name of your channel on YouTube? Alive 96 will be out December 11th, and you can see it on my YouTube channel, Greatest Show on Earth Fan Films. Awesome. Thank you so much, Andrew. Mike, Looking thank forward you. to seeing it online and uh, seeing all the great comments on it. Awesome, awesome. Thank you guys uh, so much. Yes, take it easy, Andrew. 
Alrighty, there you have it. I'd like to thank Andrew once again for joining me on the show, and I can say I'm talking on behalf of all KISS fans that we're really excited and looking forward to seeing the new Alive 96 video premiering December 11th. I strongly recommend all the KISS fans check it out. I've seen a sneak preview, and it really is as good as we're talking about. It's a lot of fun. You guys will really enjoy it. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button below. If you're listening to one of my podcasts, subscribe over there as well. Also, head on over to Facebook and follow my page, The Rock and Roll Experience with Mike Brunn, where each and every day we talk about all the rock and roll music that you love. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. See you guys next time.